crafters. So it's no secret that I like to craft, you know, and I have lots of people that'll find crafting ideas and they'll send me a text or they'll show me a pin or they'll tag me in things on Facebook. And so recently this week, I was tagged in a really cool project on Facebook by a pumpkin and a princess blog. And it was a way to use Epsom salt and glue to create these really cool snowy mason jars. And I saw that and I was like, that is so cool. And so I've kind of been playing around with the idea myself. And so I thought that I would use inspiration from the blog post that she shared and show you my own little project that I've kind of come up with. And I'm doing some things a little bit different. She has some great tips on her blog. Definitely go check it out and I'll put the description down below. But I've also found a couple ways that you can add some color and things. And I'm going to be using the idea, instead of on a glass jar, I'm going to be using it for an ornament. So I'll show you what I was able to come up with. So you can see here, it's a little hard for the camera to pick up, but I made this really cute snowy ornament. And the biggest change that I'm making is, well obviously I'm putting on an ornament, not on a mason jar, but I also added food coloring, and so it adds a little bit of color. And so I really like this because it opens a whole new window of ways to decorate. I also, you know, put my initial on there, A for Amanda, just a fun little detail. But I think it's really cool because you can coordinate these kind of ornaments, or even a mason jar like, to match whatever look you're going for. So you could stick with just the white if you want a nice snowy look, or if your tree is purple, you can make them purple, or if you want, you can just add the blue to still give it an icy look, just add a little more color. So super fun, super easy. And I also love that because it doesn't take a lot of materials and it doesn't take any kind of crazy materials, which is always nice. So I'm going to be starting with a glass ornament here. And you know, the little top comes out. I've already pulled that out for now. I've got a bag of Epsom salt. Epsom salts are the secret to making the little crystal look. As I said, my little touch to this project was food coloring. So you're gonna want some food coloring. And then you're going to want either Mod Podge or a tacky glue. I've had good results so far with the Mod Podge. Tacky glue might hold a little bit better or allow you to add a thicker layer of the Epsom salt crystals, but I found that the Mod Podge still works really well. So the first thing we want to do is to prepare our Epsom salt. So I have two cups here that I filled with Epsom salt. This one is left over from the first one that I did the blue ornament, and this is just another scoop of just regular Epsom salt. Now when you scoop out your Epsom salt, there's not some magical proportion you want to use, but what you want to keep in mind is the more Epsom salt you have, the more diluted your food dye coloring will be. So I'm trying to go for some lighter shades, I don't want super vivid shades, so I'm adding a fair amount of Epsom salt. It comes up to about here on the side of the cup, so about half full, and this is way more that I will need for one ornament, but I'm doing this just so that way I can get the color that I'm going for. So I'm going to be making purple. I'm going to add red food coloring here, my red food coloring, and I'm just going to add a drop. Now as you can see, it lands in one spot, and if you shake it around, you can see that it clumps up right there. So I've just got a popsicle stick, and I'm just going to stir this around and kind of break up that chunk. Now add a drop of glue to my red cup here. It's still not quite the shade I'm going for. I'm gonna play around with a little bit of more food coloring. So now I've achieved the shade that I was going for. It's this really pretty, deep, rich purple. It looks a little bit red on camera, but in person, it's this really vibrant, rich purple, almost maroon, burgundy kind of undertone to it. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to put a heart on the front of this one. So I'm going to use just a little roll of washi tape here. It's just duct tape brand, and I'm going to make a heart. So I'm just gonna take some pieces, and then peel the whole thing off the table. And now to cut out my heart, I'm gonna fold it together, sticky side out, and cut out half of a heart. And then to fold it, I have a nice heart here, and I'm going to just put this on the, my glass ornament. Last of all, just so that way I can make sure I can get the cap back on, I'm gonna put a little bit of the washi tape around the rim. And if you don't put any on there, you can always just wipe off any excess Mod Podge and glitter that gets on the side, or you can just do that to keep it out of the way and make it a little bit easier for cleanup. So I have rigged up a nice little system here. I've got this fun glass jar that is filled with ornament bulbs, which is a craft idea from Off Back Pie Slice of Life. I'll put the link for that video down below. You should go check that out. But she's kindly letting me use this bottle. And what I've done is I've attached a popsicle stick to the top, put a piece of tape over the top so that way none of the glitter falls in. So that way I can just set my ornament on 
there like so. And this just allows me to be able to put the Mod Podge on it without getting my hands on the Mod Podge or bumping glitter off. And it also gives it a way to dry because the bottom is weighted enough, the jar is skinny enough, that it can support the weight width of the ornament at the top and not topple over. So I'm going to open my Mod Podge. You don't need to shake Mod Podge before you use it, just in case you're wondering on that, because it will just likely create air bubbles and it stays pretty consistent. So I'm just going to use the sponge and coat the whole thing in Mod Podge, even overlapping some with the heart. You don't want to go on super thick or else it'll all run, but you do want to do a decent thickness of layer. And now it's time to add the glitter. I'm putting a plate underneath here that'll kind of hold this over. And your fingers will get a little bit of Mod Podge on them. That's okay, not a big deal though. I'm gonna take my jar here and just gently tap a nice layer of the crystals onto the Mod Podge ornament. You might notice I'm kind of tapping it down into it because it just allows it to really stick to the Mod Podge even better and helps get on thicker coats. Now once your ornament and possibly you are really covered in the crystals, you want to gently tap it so that way the excess falls off. So the last things I want to do is first off I want to wipe the edge here because as you can see my tape that was along there came off so I'm just going to gently wipe any crystals and glue off of there so I'll be able to get my cap back on. And last of all I want to use a pair of tweezers to peel the heart off. I'm going to start at the bottom. And there might be some Mod Podge there, but the nice thing is the Mod Podge will dry clear, so it won't be seen, and as long as you don't bump it, no crystals will fall in there, and it will dry with a nice heart shape. So now I'm just going to leave my setup sitting for about 15 to 20 minutes and let the Mod Podge dry, and then I'll add the cap back on and show you the finished look. And here's the finished look with the ornaments. You can see that the heart turned out super cute, on this one that we worked on today. And of course I had this one from earlier. But I really love how festive these ornaments look. And it's a really neat way to add some texture and some character to your ornaments. Another cool idea with these, if you were to make a bunch of these and then slide the glass bulbs onto a string of lights and fasten them like that, that'd be cool because you'd have a similar effect like the light inside the mason jars on a pumpkin and a princess vlog, like the original idea. But again, even if you just do ornaments like this, still super cute and very fun and easy to do. Great kids craft, and it's also nice because there's no crazy products involved. You know, most of these things you probably already have at your house. So make sure you come back for tomorrow's video. Happy crafting!